Good morning. We welcome you to Huntsville First United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you've joined us for worship this morning. If this is your first time to visit with us, we welcome you. You're our honored guest. We trust as we worship today that you'll be filled with the Spirit of God as we worship God and the Spirit, as we sing together, as we pray together, and as we hear God's Word and your message proclaimed. Welcome this morning. Let's stand together and sing our hymn of processional, hymn number 157, verses 1, 3, and 5. I invite you to remain standing and let us join together now as we affirm our faith. Again this morning we will be using the Apostles' Creed, one of the ancient creeds of the church. We invite you to join with us as we boldly declare what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. There are several announcements to call your attention to, and this morning I'm going to share a little bit about what's taking place in the life of the church while we are not able to gather, but I want you to know the church is alive and serving and meeting amongst us and doing things to help the kingdom. We will ask you to bear with us just a little bit in these days. We are recording this service, and for the next two weeks we'll be recording our 10 o'clock service and our 11 o'clock service, and then dropping them to our website and YouTube on Sunday mornings. We recognize we've had a little glitch with the internet. So our word is, if you'll be patient and be flexible, we're hoping we can have all these things worked out soon. We also, this morning, want to need you to know that it's Senior Day in our Exalt worship service. Our seniors are being recognized this has been a tough year to be a senior. We'll remember them in prayer and are grateful for their accomplishments in their lives in high school and in college. We continue to serve in ministry through our missions ministry. We are trying to find another way to be feeding. We've been feeding the children, but that has come to a close at the schools. And now we're seeking other opportunities. Presently, we're collecting crock pots for not only new futures, but also for Lincoln Village. 
We're seeking ways to find ministry in our recovery community. And we're looking forward and praying as a church staff as how we can best serve in these days of pandemic. Also, let me call to your attention our website. If you'll go to the website, the bars are this week. And at this week, if you'll click, click this week at Huntsville First, you'll find everything taking place. I want you to know that we have Bible studies, prayer meetings, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Pastor Henry will be interviewing Matthew Gardner and Stacy Daniels. We have the men's prayer breakfast group that's decided to meet outside in the Wesley Center Garden prayer area. We hope you would join them. We're social distancing, doing the things we should, so that there's much taking place. Many Zoom meetings, Bible studies, groups. We want you to know that even though we're not here, our church is ministering. So, as we come today, we come with people who are seeking God's guidance, knowing how to best minister and to be the people of God in these most unusual days. I'll let you know there's a lot of preparation being done around the church in terms of cleaning and sanitizing so that when we come back, we're going to be ready to come back, even though it'll look differently. And we've tentatively set July the 5th to come back. However, those two words, be flexible and be patient. Listen for what we're doing in these next couple of weeks. We also this morning come together as people who pray. And in praying, we gather together, and there's those that we remember. Elaine Hinckley's in the hospital. We also remember Susan Sykes in the hospital. Remember Pastor Coy and the death of his stepbrother, Steve Nichols. We remember those who are going through cancer treatments, such as Lee Rhodes and Bell and Keith Koffel. Lord, these are just some of what we remember this morning and know that you bring many on your heart with you today. And into this time of gathering for worship, may we be people who pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of glory and God of might, we gather into your presence this morning, recognize that you have all things in your hands. We cannot help but come and give praise unto you. For we know that every good and perfect we, gift we have is from you. Holy, holy art you, worthy of all praise and glory. In our lives as we look back, we know that you have carried us, you've helped us in the toughest times. While we may not see you in these moments, we know that your spirit is at work in our midst. That we will pass through these days and come through so that we'll be strong to be able to be ministering greater than we've ever done to the community that so needs Jesus. We ask that you would help us to be willing to confess our sins, to look at our lives, to see where we've fallen short, and ask for your forgiveness and to help us to change. We pray this morning recognizing that there is pain and suffering in this world that we may not understand. We would ask that you would help us to listen, to understand. We pray for those who are seeking to protect us and to keep us calm in these days. Our leaders, those who are involved in our police force, we pray for them. We pray for our church. We pray for our pastor, Pastor Glenn, as he leads in these days. We pray that you would help us as we forge our way forward to know the direction that you would have us go. We pray for those who know suffering and sadness, sickness and illness, those with COVID-19 and those who are working on the front lines. Hear our prayers. And may we pray for each other and love each other more than ever as Jesus has taught us. And may we pray together 
our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we would be calling the ushers to come forward to receive our offering. Well, we're not doing that this morning, but we are reminding you that we encourage you to give. We've been very transparent in saying how we're doing, and every week we've been able to say we're doing great and then pretty good. Well, I would say to you that we're now doing good, and we would encourage us to move from good to great. I know that all of us are looking at where we are and anxious about where we may be. But may we be obedient, be faithful, so that God's kingdom work might be done amongst us. As we give this morning, may God bless us as we share abundantly with what he's given unto us. We look forward to hearing Matthew sing, There is a bomb in Gilead. Thank you, Matthew. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. We'll be reading Matthew 9, verse 35 through chapter 10, verse 8. Would you stand with us for the reading of God's word this morning? 
Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest, so send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles, first Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, his brother John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Oh uh-huh. 
Jesus had this thing about the kingdom of God. Whatever Jesus was doing, it was always about the kingdom. Everything he did was about the kingdom. Whether he was healing or teaching or praying or turning over tables in protest or challenging the religious or government leaders or eating with sinners or saving a prostitute or raising a friend from the dead or cursing a frig fig tree which wouldn't produce or replenishing the wine at a wedding because the party had to go on or anything else whatever Jesus did was about the kingdom and nothing could deter or distract or stop Jesus for giving his life for the coming kingdom of God the Apostle Paul caught it for us as he wrote to the church at Rome when he said that nothing can separate us from the love of God that we know in Christ Jesus our Lord so that nothing will separate us from the kingdom. But why? Why was it that Jesus was so focused and so bent toward the kingdom? I believe that Jesus was focused on the kingdom because he saw the need. He saw what happens to folks like us when we don't live our lives aimed and moving toward God's goodness. Matthew tells us that as Jesus went along the way, and remember from last week when Jesus said to go make disciples as our scripture, that that going is as you go along in your regular life. As Jesus was going along his way, he was teaching and healing and making disciples and preaching about how good the kingdom of God is for people. And he saw a crowd gathered on a hillside. And they reminded him of sheep without a shepherd. They were harassed and persecuted. No one was leading them in the right directions. As a matter of fact, to Jesus, this group of people looked like they were lost and in danger. They were being misled and ignored even by the religious leaders. So Jesus, Jesus says it for us this way. Looking at the crowd, he says to his disciples gathered there, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Many of you are like me. You saw the article this week that says, and it's good news for us, in the next two years, Huntsville, our Huntsville, our little Huntsville, will be the largest city in the state of Alabama. A plentiful harvest. But where are the laborers, we ask? Maybe you're old like me. Maybe you remember that old hymn we sang in the country churches. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Now that song's not about gathering up wheat. Not at all. It's about the church gathering folks in for the kingdom of God. Jesus saw that there was a need for folks to be a part of the kingdom or else they would be in danger. If left to our own devices, we have this way of hurting each other and hurting ourselves. But Jesus saw the people and maybe that's what our first prayer ought to be focused upon in life. That we be given a heart for people so that we can see them like Jesus did. He had compassion on them. He had passion with them. He felt with them as they owned their lostness and their pain as they struggled. These were people that to Jesus looked like sheep on the brink of disaster. Now, the disciples and Jesus saw the same scene, but it was Jesus who had compassion. I really believe in this story is the beginning of Jesus helping us understand that if we're not careful, we will live our lives without any feeling for others. We won't have compassion. And so he calls us to that. And he knew that he would need every one of us to help spread the good news, to help each other, to be with each other, to have compassion upon each other. So Jesus calls disciples. We're very proud of Pastor Bill who got all of those names right this morning. 
It's a good thing for us. I want to tell you that I went home yesterday, not home to Hampton Cove where I live, but I went home home. There was a funeral that we attended, and I went back to the place where I grew up. It was nearby there in Muscle Shoals, to the area where my grandparents had lived, where I was raised. I went back to that farm that I helped with, where I helped my uncle and my grandfather who were raising cows and horses. And I saw that big old red barn, and I remembered those times when we put thousands and thousands of bales of hay in that barn, and it was hot. It was terrible. We didn't have those big round bales that you could just drive a tractor into and move them. We had those rectangular bales with the string tied around them. And everybody in the family had a job in that business then. Whether it was cutting the hay or baling the hay or running the bales to the trucks or stacking the hay, that, that was my job. I was the stacker. I was most of the time between 10 and 15 years of that work, 10 or 15 years old. And I was tall, I was skinny, and so they would put me up on the truck and they would bring the bales and because I was tall it was my job to stack it and then throw it up on the top of the stack so we could carry more bales to the barn. But after all, it, it was a strange kind of work. My grandfather even had a job. We called him Pop and he was the boss, whether we wanted to acknowledge that or not, but Pop had a job. His job was to sit in the truck and count the bales. Now we all told him, Pop, you you have the best job. You sit in the truck. Now, this was before air conditioning in trucks, most cases. So it was still hot, but he got to sit down and count. And he always acted like he was adding some things up. Now, I think that was his reason so he wouldn't have to get out and chase bales of hay. But everyone had a job. My brother, me, my cousins, even Uncle Bryce. He was really my great uncle, but we called him Uncle Bryce, and he stayed drunk most of the time, but he had a job in bailing hay. We'd put him out there, and he'd do the work. Everyone had a place to work in the family. I believe that's the way it is in the kingdom as well. Jesus called disciples, 12 of them. I asked our staff this week in staff meeting, what what were the qualifications to be called as a disciple for Jesus? The first answer was, you had to be breathing. Well, that's a pretty good one. And then someone says, well, you have to be willing. And finally, someone said, well, you know, Jesus didn't call the upper echelon, and he didn't call the dregs of society, it didn't seem like. He called just average Joes. Now, Joe Vonderheide, our youth minister, thought that was a really cool statement that Jesus called average Joes, and I would add in average Janes. Jesus sent them to teach and to heal and to tell the good news about the kingdom. But Jesus said to them a strange thing. He said, don't go near the Gentiles. They're not like us. Remember, don't go over there. They don't speak like us. They don't act like us. They don't look like us. Now, we know that Jesus adjusted that statement. It wasn't long after that that Jesus said, no, no, go into all the world. Go everywhere you can go and make disciples. It's all a part of this kingdom. But I wonder if maybe we've forgotten or even stopped seeing the average Joes and Janes of the world as worthy of the kingdom. Have we forgotten that every one of God's creations bears the likeness and image of God? There are so many people with so many issues. Is Jesus not still looking and seeing sheep without a shepherd? People who need love and guidance and care that comes from God, even if that comes through folks like us. Isn't it possible that this harvest is still plentiful and people are still in danger. I really believe that there are a lot of people in the world now being led down a path of destruction. 
And I believe that Jesus asked us in the words of the Old Testament prophet, who will go, who can I send for me in this time? Who will see people with their true value? Who will feel with them their hurts and help them in their needs? Jesus reminded his disciples that they had received the good news of God without paying for it. And so he said to them, go and give it away without a payment again. You know, Jesus had this thing about the kingdom. It was like a big family. Sometimes being a part of this big Christian family is like being a part of a mixed up good and bad, strong and struggling family like I grew up in like you probably grew up in. And coming to church and being a part of a church family is like going to the yearly family reunion, but we do it every week. It draws us in, this call to be together, and at the same time it scares us to death. Because some folks in our family are just not like us. Their names don't even sound like ours, and yet there they are at the reunion. They show up every year. There they are. I'm talking about folks with names like Aunt Cheedy and Uncle Joe and Uncle Ulysses and Uncle Bryce and Tommy and Aunt Missouri and Uncle Glenn and Arvie and on and on and on it goes. And those are the ones that are alive. We also feel the presence of those who've gone before us. The ones that are nearer and dear to us. Mom and Dad and Mama Davis and Aunt Sybil and Aunt Bogey. They're with us too. You see, this kingdom is a bigger family than we ever think about, than we realize. And some of them are very different from us. Because in this family of God, there are always going to be those who are humming along with Bach, like Jillian played for us at the beginning of the service. And others are going to be singing Chris Tomlin and Lauren Daigle. Some are going to be dancing with their hands raised up in praise, and some are going to be silent on their knees in prayer. And some are going to be speaking English, and many others are going to be speaking other languages. And they're going to be skin tones all over the place. And all of it is because God loves all of us. And Jesus said there's a, there's a harvest out there for this kingdom. It's like wheat. It just grows and grows, and they're out there, and they're close to you. Who will go and harvest? Who will bring them in? Well, I ask, who wouldn't want to be a part of a family? A family that's mixed up and crazy and just like us. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. We call it a commission that we have been given. Mission with Jesus. It's our call to tell people, to share with them, to love them into this kingdom. And maybe it's like I was yesterday as we drove down Wheeler Dam Road. Just past Wheeler Dam, there's a little church, one room. It was a place where I first heard that song. Miss Mildred banging on that old upright piano and the 25 or so of us in church Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Lord, let it be. Amen and amen. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, don't let us off the hook. Don't let us push aside the call that you've given to us to see all our neighbors with your image, to love people enough to invite them to you, to your kingdom, to your love, your forgiveness, your help, your hope. Help us to answer when you say, who can I send? Lord, send us. Use us. Bless us. Lord, as we pause in a moment like this, 
Help us to see each other as simply the children of the greatest shepherd that the world has ever known, the one who has compassion on us. And then give us eyes to see others the same way. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 664 in our Methodist hymnal. Sent forth by God's blessing, we'll sing verses 1 and 2. I invite you to join as we stand and sing together. My brothers and sisters in Christ, my friends in Jesus Christ, all you sheepish folk that belong to this great flock that we call the church, all of us as a part of that flock, let us go forth now and live. Let us go forth and serve. Let us go forth and love. There's a bountiful harvest out there. Jesus is calling us there and leading us there. So as we go, we go with joy, remembering that we take with us the gifts of God. May grace and mercy and peace from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.